Hi, Joyce Herb, guest designer for Cut at Home, where you'll learn crafting tips for people with hand challenges and lots of techniques and products will be explored. Today we'll be looking at a trend of a nautical theme in a multimedia decor project. For our water background, we're going to be using some brushos. And this is just a little test I did of the colors to see if I like them. Also, I'll be doing some other tests on it later. The numbers are simply my way of referencing my swatches that I made. The ones without numbers are the new ones that I just haven't swatched out yet. I'm using sandstone, turquoise, cobalt blue, yellow, and ochre. And I just tap it. That's sandstone and the yellow at the top. And then I'm just going to randomly put turquoise cobalt blue around it. I've sped it up here. I guess this part could be pretty boring, but I want you to see the whole process. So I sprayed this with water. And this is pearlized water. It's simply water that I added some pearlized watercolor from Dick Blick into it. And then I give it a good spray. The paper will bubble. If you don't want it to curl as much, then tape it down. It's really a pain for me to tape things down. And I let it air dry. And I've got a bunch of pieces off to the side that I cut and stamped. And I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be using yet. And so I'm just doing a rough layout to get a general idea. Stamps I used are all from Heartfelt Creations Under the Sea. The general idea of where I'm going to position images basically helped me know where I want to put some concentration of color. So that's what I just did. Went back and added some more. Now this is the part that's risky. I've never done this before and I wasn't sure if I was going to get mud. I just laid it and streaked it and I loved it. It gave a nice texture to my water. Then I go with a paintbrush and just make sure I don't have any white spaces because you wouldn't have white highlights under the sea. You can air dry this, but I prefer how the backgrounds look when they dry by themselves. This is how the air dried background looks. We'll be using under the sea coral. This is a shimmer sheet by Elizabeth Crafts also under the sea with the fish and then the coral reef collage. And we're using stays on ink because this is a non-porous material. And when I'm done stamping, I will be cleaning with a chamois cloth that you can get at auto repair, you can get at Amazon, you can get at different craft stores. And it cleans the stamps really well. And I keep mine in a little zippy and I just clean it every so often with soap and water. It's stained, but that doesn't hurt anything. Now to cut this out, I had to run it through the Big Shot twice with a shim. I'm going to apply some gesso to my practice sheet. And I'm doing this to test whether or not I'll be able to paint over it with the brushos. And I do this because I haven't done this ahead of time for this recording. When I do multimedia, it's just testing and trying things that are in my head and ideas that I've got. It's totally trial and error. And if something doesn't work, then I try something different. Here I'm just testing the color to see if it blends with the other colors that I've used. And then I will go over that gesso and it covers great. I've got a bubble stamp from my stash that we're going to be using and I'm using the Fiskars because it doesn't have cling on it and I couldn't attach it to my positioner. So I just ink this up with VersaFine, which is waterproof. And now I'll put it into my positioner. And I'm going to be adding some white texture using a Tim Holtz texture stamp from Stampers Anonymous. And I ink this up with white pigment ink and it didn't you could hardly see it, so I added some more. But in the end, I didn't really care for it because it was too distinct of a pattern. But it's there, so it won't hurt anything. These images were all cut out of 
Russia background paper from my stash. And I, so I didn't color them. I'm going to enhance the coloring now to try and bring some depth and highlights and interest to the images. My favorite is the beta fish, which is purples and pinks, and it's got some pearlized in it, and I do very little to it. That was memento yellow, and the rest of the colors I'll be using are all distress markers. The swirlies on the bottom of the card are from the coral dye, and I just cut that out of one of the backgrounds and chopped it up to make it kind of look like coral. And I'm just positioning to get an idea. Now I take the fish and the beta especially, and I'm using a purple memento dewdrop and trying to add some darkness around the edges for contrast when, I, when it's on that background. This is a stencil that I made on my Silhouette Cameo. And I'm simply dabbing on some white pigment ink Again, just for some texture in the background. Now I'm using the dewdrop again on the edges of the beta fish. And this is the colors all from the paper. And all I'm doing is using this paper, Fantastics paper thingy, and <laughs> dipping it in the ink and using it like a pen to define some of the lines. It just helps give it a little bit of definition. So I'm not really adding any other color to that other than that. Now here I actually do have some decent contrast. And I end up using a different fish in the end, but at this point I don't know. Same thing with the seahorse. I ended up using the um, shimmer sheet one instead. But the position's kind of where I'm going to put it. Then the turtle, same thing. I use barn door here. And I'm just adding some color. And I go back and use a pearl pen and add some white highlights to the shell as well. Now this is from the bottom of the octopus that I cut off. And I wanted it to kind of look like seagrass. And what I was going here for is variation of color, but it didn't really work. You can see the white. So I went in with the distress stain. I believe it's moss, and I end up not using it, it's too dark, but, and then this is the little pieces of coral that I cut, and I you just put a pile of glue there and put it on with my fingers, because it'd be too much for me to dab on. You probably see little hands that are trying to help Grandma. And this is the flower soft that I'm putting on the coral. I wasn't real nuts about it in the end, and I used very little of it. But I never know, so I just do several different colors and have it available so when it comes time to assemble, I've got my piece. I think my favorite parts of the project are the brush hole background and the texture paste. I have a hard time getting it out of the bottle, but I love this stuff. I'm actually putting two little piles on my mat here for two different colors. And I'm adding Pearl X for the coloring from my stash. It's ancient. I have no idea the colors. And in hindsight, I should have just colored it all with brush -o. I will be adding some brush -o here, and it really does a good job. I'm going to speed it up a little faster here. So I'm just mixing it, and then I will be applying it mostly in the areas where the two main fish are going to be. So this is about under the where the beta is and above. And I'm doing this because I think it's going to help the images pop, but the opposite happens. But that's okay, the texture still looks great, and I fix it. So I'm just mixing this up. And I'm adding some Elizabeth Craft glitter in there. I want some sparkle. And here's where I'm adding the turquoise brush out because I really needed to deepen the color. It actually could have been a little deeper, but that's okay, like I said. I'll figure out how to make it deeper. I'm adding some of the Elizabeth Craft clear glitter all over everything and I set it aside to dry. These are dyes from my stash and I'm using them as seagrass and I'm covering them in Versamark ink. And I'm going to be using a UT ultra thick embossing powder and it won't stick real well to the leaves but that's the look I'm going for. I want just some texture 
add it for some additional color and depth and gloss. So I will just coat this and then off camera I will blow I will heat heat it with my heat gun. I put some sandstone brush out on my mat and added some water. I'm going to add a little bit more here. And all I'm going to do is dye my cheesecloth to add some texture to the to the project. Plus it adds some additional color. I have an issue with my tones being too similar and this helps give me a little more contrast. So I will just spread this out and let it dry. Now I want to make these bubbles look translucent. So this is a little bit of bleach in water. It's a pretty weak concentration because I want to move some color, not all the color. The more bleach you add, the more color you will pick up of the brush out. And I'm just dabbing it off. So I will do this to all of the bubbles at least twice to lift some of the color. To really make these bubbles pop, we need white highlights. And I'm using a Copic white with my brush. And the better tool to use would be a Signo white jelly pen. Mine wouldn't work. So this is what I had. So this is what I'm using. But if you've got a Signo white jelly pen, that's what I'd highly recommend using. You have better control over the placement. And the this particular stamp for my sash actually has all the little highlight areas marked out on it, so it made it easy. And the white highlights is really what makes them pop and look like they're really bubbles. Using one of those little micro tips that I've got, I'm adding a little bit of white highlights to the eyes of some of the fish, just to help bring some dimension and life to these images. I'm going to be adding some sand using this mix of seed beads and some PVA glue. That bottle of beads is something that got spilled long ago and I almost threw it out a couple of months ago and I realized that it would make great texture. Now this bottle, I wanted a lot of glue and there's no way I can press this particular bottle. So I'm actually just holding it down with my elbow and moving my card underneath it. At this point, that card is glued to a really heavy piece of chipboard. That's why it's not curled anymore. So I get a really good layer on it. And I'm going to smooth it out with the best tool in the craft room, my fingers. It's messy and gooey, but it works the best. I used to make seed bead jewelry, so I knew I would never use these again. So I, that's why I said I almost threw them out. I'm glad I didn't because they will come in handy for texture. So I'm just going to pour it. I have I had beads all over the place. Now I'll just let it sit. I'll push it in a little bit. And I'll just let that sit and air dry. And while it's drying, I'm going to move on. Now this is a triple thick clear paste and I use this instead of glossy accents because it's easier for me to apply. If you have glossy accents, it will work just the same. So I'm covering the bubbles with this. And I'm putting a pretty, and it is thick, so it actually will have some dimension. And I'm putting a pretty heavy coat on here. And I'm adding it to every single bubble. And I'm putting a thick coat over all of the embellishments. This fish I added, it's cut out of the paper stack from under the sea. And I'm giving it a good thick coat. And I'll be doing this to all of them. Here I've got a couple colors of Copic markers in the BG. And what happened here is, see how milky it is? The Copic wasn't dry when I put the gloss on. So this is you totally wouldn't have to do this if you used the Signo pen and waited for it to dry, or if I would have waited for it to dry. So the first color was too light, so I went in with a darker color, and then it was too streaky, so I went back with a lighter color and blended the two. And then in the end, it did look good. 
You may notice my sand is covered in white gesso. This is a pit pen, and I'm trying to add some shadow. And what you see me doing there is trying to smear it, and the smearing didn't really work. This is plain water, and I've smeared it before, and it worked, but I think it's because it was on top of gesso. So then I'm going in with the Zig Clean Color Water Brush and using some plain water. Now for the stones, um, that video went missing, but I just covered them all with gesso. And here what I'm doing is adding some brushos to color the sand. I also use the Distress Stain linen, I believe it was, for the background for the lighter tones. Now I'm going in with a higher concentration of the brusho sandstone. I'm going to be adding the gauze now over to the side and I'm just putting on some dries clear glue and I press it in and let it let it dry and I'm fiddling with those with the drops again and now I'm adding some more shadow with a darker turquoise zig brush and again smoothing out the lines with the water. Now for my beta is not enough contrast because of that texture that I added so I'm using the dark turquoise from the zig pen and I'm outlining it and I'm just going to be adding different colors here. That's not too bad, but I want a little bit bigger shadow. So I'm going in and deepening it up. Now this is a gray, a medium gray. And I just use various colors to try and get a tone. I'm using the little embellishment there for placement to make sure I get the shadows in the right place. So I'm using the water brush, the water pen, so the edges aren't too defined. Here's my tentative final layout. It's not quite final, but pretty close. I added just a couple of those coral pieces because I didn't want to overdo it. And then I put one of the shimmer sheets embellishments at the top to help balance out the seahorse. So those aren't glued on. What is glued on are the two larger leaves. And I'm just positioning the smaller leaves or seagrass, whatever it is, to see where I want to glue it on. I want to darken up the edges to try and frame it, and this is the Distress Stain Denim. And I'm just going to go around all the edges. And I place my fish and decide I need a little bit more depth to it. So I take the cobalt blue brushos in a pretty high concentration and I'm going to add some more color there because I, I really want that fish not to blend into the background. Then I decide my denim isn't dark enough as it dried so I'm adding the cobalt blue to the edges as well. Then I'll come back with the water brush and soften all those edges. First time I use this particular water brush, I'm not nuts about it. I'm not sure which brand it is, but see how wet it is? I mean, the water's like pouring out of the thing. But it works. I just soften the edges a little bit. Now it's time to glue it all down. And this is what the card looks like. I ended up adding two turtles and some sh shells that I cut out from the paper collection from Under the Sea. Product links and written instructions are at the Cut at Home blog, and you can find additional links for some of the media that I use at the paperfinesse.com website. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them and have fun making your own nautical project. Have a great day.